Hey everyone, and welcome to episode two of our series finale called Believe. If you didn't check out episode one, make sure you pause this right now and check that out before uh, we continue on with this. You know, when God put revelation on our hearts to teach, we had no idea the circumstances we'd be facing right now as, uh, in our own lives, uh, in this country, in this world globally. It's just pretty crazy what's happening around us. And I can't help but think, honestly, like God is just really trying to draw his people closer to him through the struggle right now. And so uh, what we we're going to do initially is have like, lo like larger chunks of scripture for you guys to read up until our worship services, but obviously those are not happening right now. So what we decided to do is have five smaller episodes, five little nuggets, you could call, uh, during the week as we kind of get involved with God's scripture. Um, and what you're going to see is smaller sections of scripture written by our devotion team. Our devotion team, by the way, holla, devotion team, devotion team. They're amazing. They're doing a great job. And so you're going to see that first, and then we're going to read the text with you guys in a really kind of cool, engaging way with different images and music and other elements like that. So let's get rolling right now. This is going to be from Revelation chapter 6 through 11. In the chapters you will read today, we encounter the seven seals and the seven trumpets. The first of the seven seals are opened and announce the Antichrist. Next one comes warfare, famine, plague, and the martyrdom of those who believe in Jesus, as well as a great earthquake. The seventh seal announces the seven trumpets. The trumpets announce hail and fire, death of sea life, darkening of the sun and the moon, locusts that torture those who have rejected Christ, and the attack of a demonic army. The last trumpet announces the seven angels who carry the bowls of God's wrath. And we'll read about those in coming days, so stay tuned for that. You also will read of the two witnesses in these chapters, each witness is equipped with power from God to, to do miracles and prophecy. After the time stated, they will be killed by the beast, and then three and a half days later, resurrected and taken into heaven. Some believe that because of the miracles they performed, these two witnesses might have been Moses or Elijah. Others believe they are Enoch and Elijah, two men from the Old Testament who were taken up into heaven without ever experiencing death. Another theory is that these are two people who will be chosen by God for this work, and we don't quite know their identities yet. Any of these are possible answers, but should not distract us from the message. What these passages show us is that the punishment of sin is real. There will be judgment upon this earth, but in those days there's a time for people to turn their hearts to God. God will also provide two people to testify for 1,260, with no one able to stop their message. And as we, as we kind of close this, let's remember the words here in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Hey, Foundry Church, the book of Revelation, we are going to turn our attention towards it and work our way through word for word. As we do so, for you as parents, I would like to invite you to be cautious. We have a lot of images we use in this to help communicate what John the Revelator saw, and we use that in the reading. It is all scripture, but I would say it's PG-13, and you as parents might want to be aware and uh, be wise in, in making sure maybe you preview this for your kiddos. Uh, we don't want you to have to maybe answer some of the questions that are just hard enough with the imagery to deal with. So go ahead, uh, preview this if you want. If you're going to do it for family devotions, enjoy. Join me as we dive in. Revelation chapter 6, here we go. As I watched, I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out to conquer, bent on conquest. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword." When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in its hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. 
I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and hell followed after it. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, by famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altars, under the altar, though the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? To each of them, then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait just a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. I watched. As he opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned red, blood red, and even the stars in the sky fell to earth as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up. Every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can withstand it? Revelation 7. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. And then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of these, of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. And from the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne, before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and they were holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and unto the lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne of God and worshiped God saying, amen, praise and glory, wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? And I replied, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them in his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not be down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here's the song of the redeemed Rising from the African plain Here's the song of the forgiven Drowning out the Amazon rain The 
song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe and every tongue, every nation, a love song born for a grateful choir. It's all got children singing glory, glory. Above the four winds, caught up in the heavenly sound. Let praise those echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples. None ring truer than this. No, it's all got children singing glory, glory. All the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. No, when all God's children sing out glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Yeah. yeah, we will always sing out glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's Singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. It's all God's people singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Revelation chapter 8. When he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God and the seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hands. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Then the seven angels, who had the seven trumpets, prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up. A third of the trees were burned up. All the green grass was burned up. The second angel st sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood, and a third of the waters turned bitter. 
and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the three other angels." Revelation 9, the fifth angel sounded his trumpet and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss and out of the smoke came locusts. And they came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their, day, on their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and on their faces, they resembled human faces. Their hair was like a woman's hair. Their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had a breastplate like the breastplate of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like scorpions. In their tails they had torment. They had the power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abandon, and in Greek Apollyon, that is the destroyer. The first woe is past, and the other two are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet. I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who were bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had kept ready, had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of all mankind, a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000, I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses re resembled heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths, in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they could inflict injury. The, mess, the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the works of their hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, wood, and stone and wood idols that cannot see, hear, or walk, nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Revelation chapter 10, then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud and a rain with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. And he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. And he swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it, and said, there will be no more delay. 
But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me once more. Go, take the this, this scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel, and I asked him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but in your mouth it will be as sweet as honey. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach turned sour. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, Languages and kings. Revelation chapter 11. I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshipers, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for 42 months and I will appoint my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouth and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time that they are prophesying. And they have power to turn the waters into blood and strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them, overpower them, and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze upon their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them, and they will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. At, their, at that very hour, there was a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to, God, to the God of heaven. The second woe is past and the third is coming soon. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come the time for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants the prophets and your people who revere your name both great and small and for destroying those who destroy the earth then god's temple in heaven was opened and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant and there came flashes of lightning rumblings peals of thunder and earthquake and a severe hailstorm 